Now, before we go into isometrics and how they are linked up with the muscular system, we need to know about the muscular system. So let's get nerdy and talk exercise science. What is the muscular system? The body's muscular system is essentially the network of muscles throughout our body that enables movement, maintains posture, and supports various bodily functions. It comprises of three main types of muscles, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Skeletal muscles are what most people think of when they talk about muscles. These muscles are attached to bones by tendons and are under voluntary control, meaning you consciously decide to move them. They're responsible for all of your major movements, like lifting weights, running, and even simple tasks like typing or smiling. Skeletal muscles are striated, which means that they have a banded appearance under a microscope due to their structure of muscle fibers arranged in repeating units called sarcomeres. Smooth muscles are found in the walls of internal organs like the stomach, intestines, blood vessels, and even the skin. These muscles are involuntary, meaning they work without you having to think about it. They help with processes like digestion, blood flow, and regulating the size of your pupils. Smooth muscles are not striated and they contract in a slow, sustained manner. Cardiac muscle is found only in the heart. Like smooth muscle, it's involuntary, but it has a striated appearance similar to skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle cells are connected by intercalated discs which allow for synchronized contractions necessary to pump blood effectively throughout your body. Together, these muscles make up the muscular system and work in concert with other systems like the nervous system and the skeletal system to keep us moving and functioning properly. Here are a few key points about the muscular system before we transition to its involvement with isometric. One, muscle fibers are the cells of muscles. They contain myofibrils, which are made up of repeating units called sarcomeres. Sarcomeres are the functional units of muscle contraction, where the proteins actin and myosin slide past each other to shorten the muscle produced force. Two, a motor unit consists of a motor neuron and the muscle fibers it innervates. When a motor neuron sends a signal, all the muscle fibers in that motor unit contract together. The size and number of motor units recruited determine the strength of the muscle contraction. Three, muscle fibers can be classified as type one slow twitch or type two fast twitch. Slow twitch fibers are more endurance oriented and are used for activities like long distance running. Fast twitch fibers are more suited for explosive powerful movements like sprint or lifting heavy weights. Four, muscles can adapt to various types of training. Resistance training leads to muscle hypertrophy through increased protein synthesis and the formation of new muscle fibers. Endurance training enhances the muscle's oxidative capacity, improving their ability to sustain prolonged activity. Five, when muscles are stressed during exercise, microscopic tears occur in the muscle fibers. The body repairs these tears through a process called muscle protein synthesis, where satellite cells, a type of stem cell, fuse to the damaged fibers leading to muscle growth and increased strength. Essentially, the muscular system is a highly complex and adaptable network that enables you to perform everything from basic everyday activities to intense physical exertion, playing a huge role in overall health and fitness. Now, how exactly is that going to translate to isometric exercise? How do they interrelate? Let's get even more nerdy with it. When we hit those isometric exercises, we're basically contracting our muscles without changing their length. Think of it like pushing against a wall. You're generating force, but nothing's moving. This type of training can be broken down into yielding and overcoming isometrics, each giving your muscles a unique kind of challenge. Yielding isometrics are like holding a squat position halfway down. Your muscles are working hard to keep you in place, resisting gravity. This type of isometric contraction can help enhance muscle endurance and stability as your muscle fibers are engaged continuously to maintain that position. It's like telling your muscles, hey, hold the fort. Your body's neuromuscular coordination gets a solid boost here. Now with overcoming isometrics, which are a bit different, imagine you're trying to lift an immovable object, like pushing against a fixed barbell on a rack. Here, you're generating maximum force without actual movement. This form of isometric contraction is excellent for building maximum strength and power. Your central nervous system, or CNS, goes into overdrive, recruiting as many motor units as possible. It's like rallying all your muscle fibers for an all-out effort, even though there's no movement. During both types of isometrics, you're tapping into the muscle's force-length relationship. When your muscles contract isometrically, they operate at an optimal length for force production. This is different from dynamic movements where muscle length and contraction velocity can influence the force generated. Motor unit recruitment is another key play here because in overcoming isometrics, we're essentially maxing out our muscles ability to contract by calling 
working on the high threshold motor units, which are typically harder to recruit. This can lead to greater muscle activation and over time, increased strength. On the metabolic side, isometric exercises can also influence metabolic stress. During sustained isometric holds, muscle blood flow can be restricted, leading to an accumulation of metabolites like lactate, which can signal muscle growth through a process called metabolic hypertrophy. Now about the muscle fibers, isometric exercises can engage both type one, slow twitch, and type two, fast twitch muscle fibers. Yielding isos often keep the slow twitch muscle fibers engaged due to the endurance aspect. Think about planks here. While overcoming isos can fire up those fast twitch fibers, which are more about explosive strength. During these isometric exercises, especially OI, our muscles engage in a type of contraction known as maximal voluntary contraction or MVC. And if you haven't seen our video on MVC, I always allude to this video. Here's a link right here. It is very important when we're talking about isometric training. Here's a link, go ahead and check that out. This is where we push or pull as hard as we can against an immovable object. Engaging in maximal voluntary contractions increases intramuscular tension, which enhances mechanotransduction, which is the process by which cells sense and respond to mechanical loads. This can stimulate muscle protein synthesis, leading to muscle growth and strength gains over time. One of the reasons why we still can gain size and strength with isometrics. And if you haven't seen our video on isometrics, symmetric hypertrophy, here's a link, go ahead and check that one out. Another aspect to consider is time under tension or TUT. In isometric training, TUT is maximized because the muscle remains engaged for an extended period. This prolonged engagement can lead to greater metabolic stress and muscle fiber activation. The muscle fibers are held in a state of contraction, which promotes endurance and strength. Isometrics also play a significant role in joint stability. By strengthening the muscles around the joint, isometrics can enhance joint integrity and function, which is really important important for stabilizing muscles such as the rotator cuff and the shoulder or the muscles surrounding the knee. Having this enhanced joint stability can prevent injuries and improve overall movement efficiency. Tendon stiffness, another factor influenced by isometric exercises, involve the tendons which connect muscles to bones and they will become more resilient through isometric training. Increasing tendon stiffness improves the efficiency of force transfer from muscle to bone, which is absolutely critical for explosive movements and overall athletic performance. One of the reasons why I've mentioned many times on this channel why athletes need to be performing OI on the regular. Neuromuscular efficiency is also improved with isometrics. This refers to the ability of the nervous system to effectively recruit muscle fibers to produce force. Isometric training enhances the brain muscle connection, leading to more precise and powerful movements. Over time, this can result in better performance in dynamic exercises and sports activities. Now we've mentioned the body's skeletal system and the neurological system at the very beginning of this video. If you'd like to learn more about both of those systems, I highly recommend you check out this playlist right here covering both of them, and we will see you there.